that shirt and those slacks? Uh uh. Was the comment by an office fashionista some years ago about my chosen attire of the day. She was self appointed as the official decider of what was and was not appropriate office wear. Not in the sense of whether or not it was decent, but whether or not it was fashionable. While many may have felt compelled to comply with her arbitrary dress code, I did not. I politely explained that I was over 40, had been married to the same woman for over 20 years, and didn't care what she thought about my outfit. The look of shock on her face was priceless. But that told me just how much some folk believe that they know best what other people should wear and the power of the pressure to conform. While relatively unimportant in the work world, it's a completely different matter among Christians. On today's Morning Minutes in the Bible on Traditional Tuesday, let's take another look at the problem of dress codes in the church. Because there are many churches that have a dress code, most unofficial, and they pressure everyone to conform. Some have an official dress code and try to compel compliance. That's a serious problem for at least two reasons. First, the New Testament standard for clothing makes it an internal heart matter. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. 1 Peter 3, verses 3 and 4. Yes, it's specifically talking about how a woman approaches her husband, but it teaches a principle for all of us. Plus, every New Testament passage discussing what we wear externally echoes this passage. Therefore, any required style of external attire for the church is arbitrary and culturally based, going beyond New Testament authority. Second, the imposition of any chosen style on others is a violation of Romans 14, which talks about our approach to things that are optional. Insisting that others wear a specific attire is no different than forbidding the eating of meat or insisting on keeping certain days. Some have used the text to argue that others should dress to meet their standard, but that makes the standard binder the weaker brother, Romans 14 verse 1. Older, stronger, more faithful brethren should reject the imposition of an unscriptural standard on other brethren. But quite often they act like younger, weaker brethren by insisting others dress in a way that meets their standards. We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Therefore, for anyone setting a dress code that requires a jacket and tie, instead of what I told the office fashionista, I will tell the church fashionista. I care enough about what you think to call you out. Don't be the weaker brother who has to be appeased by stronger brethren submitting to your dress code. If you demand others meet your dress code, you are weak. And I challenge you to get stronger. And I hope you care enough about having your thinking challenged to come back tomorrow for another Morning Minutes in the Bible. Until then, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.